We begin with breaking news in Walker County tonight where a lawsuit has been filed against the sheriff and other jail officials. Good evening to you. I'm Ben Hoover. I'm Sherry Jackson. The family of Anthony Mitchell, who died while in police custody last month, has filed a wrongful death lawsuit. CBS 42's Carly Lang joins us live in studio with what we know about this case right now. Carly. This is one of the most appalling case of jail abuse the country has seen. That's the first line of this nearly 40 page lawsuit filed on behalf of Anthony Tony Mitchell's family. Now we have obtained surveillance video from inside the jail showing Mitchell being carried out and placed in a sheriff's patrol unit. As we reported last week, this video contradicts the statement we received from the sheriff's office about Mitchell's condition when he left the jail. We do want to warn you this video may be disturbing to some viewers. Claims made in this lawsuit give a closer look into what Mitchell's family believes happened to him during his two weeks in the Walker County Jail. According to court documents, Mitchell froze to death. The lawsuit states he arrived at the hospital with a body temperature of 72 degrees. That lawsuit claims Mitchell was likely placed in a restraint chair in the jail kitchen's walk-in freezer or a similar environment and left there for hours. Now, since obtaining this video and receiving this lawsuit, we did reach out to the Walker County Sheriff's Office for comment. We have not yet heard back at this time. If you would like to take a closer look at this lawsuit, you can find this story on our website. That's CBS42.com. Now, this is an ongoing investigation. Be sure to stay tuned to CBS42 News on air and online as more details become available. Sherry. It's been nearly a month since this video of what Tony Mitchell's family says could be his final moment surfaced. It sparked a federal investigation into his death, and while time keeps ticking on, his family tells me they are not giving up. We're without my brother, and we have no answers. It's been over a month since Tony Mitchell died. His sister, Miranda Mitchell Gutzmer, says it's still hard to believe it's true. I want to grieve. And I'm just not able to because so much stuff is happening and we're, we don't have any answers. It all started with a welfare check. You think that the police are going to be there to help you. That's what you learned in school, right? Call 911 if something bad's happening. And then your loved one's taken away and you never see them again. Mitchell Gutzmer says her brother Tony had struggled with addiction for years. And after the death of their father in 2022, Mitchell's addiction spiraled. One of the things before my father passed away was that, you know, he just wanted me to be there for Tony. So I tried to check in on him. <laughs> and it was hard because I wanted so badly for him to get help. That welfare check ended with Mitchell being charged with attempted murder. According to this Facebook post from the sheriff's office, Mitchell pulled a gun and fired at least one shot at deputies before running away and eventually being arrested. The post included a photo of Mitchell that drew harsh criticism from many in the community. And I just see this photo of someone I don't even recognize and my heart just broke. It didn't seem fair to exploit someone in this horrific time. Two weeks later, on January 26th, Mitchell died. We thought, okay, if he goes to jail, maybe he can get himself clean and we can put him into treatment afterward and have a second chance at life. <laughs> and unfortunately, that's not going to happen. About a week later, Mitchell Gutzmer got a Facebook message. It was this video from inside the Walker County Jail showing Mitchell being carried out of the jail and put into a patrol car. It was horrifying to watch. And I know so many people have seen it, and I just want to remind people, that's my brother in that video. <laughs> it's really hard to watch it every time. <laughs> she says she had no idea this nightmare was just beginning. On February 13th, the family filed a wrongful death lawsuit. That lawsuit claims Mitchell was likely placed in the jail's walk-in freezer or similar frigid environment for hours. How can someone in jail die of hypothermia and no one ever knew that it was happening? The lawyer for the Walker County Sheriff's Office responded to the lawsuit. The motion to strike includes the quote, a lie makes it halfway around the world before the truth gets its boots on. The old adage, you know, a lie gets around the world before the truth gets to put its boots on. Well, the lie that he was alert and conscious did get around the world before we even got our boots on. We never saw the medical records 
when that was publicized. That alleged lie she is referring to is this. The statement Public Information Officer T.J. Armstrong sent to me the day Tony Mitchell's death was reported. The statement says, quote, the inmate was alert and conscious when he left the facility and arrived at the hospital. Once we got the truth of the medical records and saw the video, alert and conscious is far from the truth. According to those medical records, Mitchell arrived at the hospital unresponsive, pulseless, and cold to the touch. Those documents also note he had a core temperature of 72 degrees. The notes read in part, quote, It is difficult to understand a rectal temperature of 72 degrees. It goes on to say, I do believe that hypothermia was the ultimate cause of death. Court documents from the attorneys for the sheriff's office say allegations that Mitchell was left in a freezer are the definition of scandalous. An official autopsy report is still pending. New videos just recently made public capture Mitchell's incarceration. I really wish it wasn't true, but everything points to this was not just a chance occurrence. This was purposeful, what they did. This video shows corrections officers wrestling Mitchell to the ground and holding up what appears to be a stun gun, then dragging him out of an office. It's just one of many videos, Gutsmar says is disturbing. And that all of this was happening while they're knowingly being recorded as well is even scarier. That they weren't worried about this being on video. And it's that fear that keeps Gutsmar fighting for justice. Do you think you would know any of this? Do you think the world would be talking about Tony Mitchell if those videos had not come out? I don't think so. And as hard as it, it is to see these videos, I'm thankful that they're out there because we would have never known, and this would have been swept under the rug. And they're trying really hard to keep sweeping it, but we're not going to let that happen. You can read the lawsuit filed by Mitchell's family, the response from attorneys for the sheriff's office, and view all of the newly released videos. They're all posted for you right now on our website, cbs42.com. Another candlelight vigil is being held for Mitchell this weekend in Jasper. Reporting in the studio tonight, Carly Lang, CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on. Now that lawsuit claims that when the Walker County Sheriff Nick Smith learned that this officer exposed the crimes of his department, retaliated and fired her. Now, according to court documents, that officer Karen Kelly said she couldn't live with herself knowing what had happened to Mitchell the night of January 26. Now the video distributed that resulted in her alleged firing has since sparked outrage from some here in the community. Today alone, protesters stood tall outside of the Walker County Sheriff's Office, bearing a sign that reads, quote, Nick Smith for prison. Gavin Bromlett says he was disgusted when he saw the video and he wants to see change. We shouldn't have a sheriff that stands by as people are locked up and frozen to death. This man went to the hospital, as you know, his body temperature was 72 degrees, and that's not physically possible sitting in a climate-controlled cell like they're supposed to have. Now, throughout the day, a few others joined Bromlett. Several people honked their horns when they drove by and applauded him as they drove through this area. Now, we did reach back out to the sheriff's office today for a comment on this video and the now two lawsuits filed against them. We have not re received a comment at this time. We're speaking out for the first time about an inmate who died while in custody of the Walker County Sheriff's Department. Good evening to you. I'm Ben Hoover. I'm Sherry Jackson. As we first told you yesterday at 5 o'clock, a lawsuit has been filed against the sheriff and jail officials in connection with Anthony Mitchell's death. CBS 42's Carly Lang joined us live now. She's been in Jasper all day talking with the community and Carly friends say this is not how they want Anthony Mitchell to be remembered. Ben and Sherry this video these lawsuits surrounding the death of Anthony Mitchell who was an inmate here at the Walker County Sheriff's Office. It's raising some concerns and outrage from friends as you mentioned and people here in the community. You can see a growing protest here behind me. It started out earlier today with just one man and now it's grown to what you see here. People are shouting things like answers and justice for Tony. 
and justice is what these protesters are calling for this afternoon. You can see the growing protest here outside of the Walker County Sheriff's Office. We did reach out to the Sheriff's Office for comment on the video and the now two lawsuits filed against them. We first reported yesterday that the family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the sheriff and other personnel. And today, corrections officer Karen Kelly filed an uh, First Amendment lawsuit against both the sheriff and personnel here at the jail as well. We have that full lawsuit for you on our website. That's CBS42.com. This, of course, is an ongoing investigation. Be sure to stay tuned to CBS42 News for the latest updates on air and online as they become available. Reporting live in Jasper tonight, Carly Lang, CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on. All right, Carly. The investigation into the death of Anthony Mitchell, who died in the custody of the Walker County Sheriff's Office, continues. Tonight, CBS 42 is hearing more stories of alleged abuse and neglect happening inside the Walker County Jail. Good evening, I'm Sherry Jackson. And I'm Ben Hoover. CBS 42's Carly Lang spoke with a family who says their daughter died while in jail over $40, Carly. Ben, that's right. In the wake of recent allegations of abuse and neglect happening at the Walker County Jail, one family wants to share their story. It's an interview you'll only see here on CBS 42. Mike Harris tells me he never expected his daughter to die after being booked in the Walker County Jail. She can't speak for herself, so that's what I'm doing. Autumn Harris died December 5th, 2018, after being incarcerated at the Walker County Jail. I think if anything had been done for her, she'd still be here today. Harris was originally arrested in June 2018 for a theft of property charge. Her family's lawyer, Justin Jones, says she was released on bond and set to appear in court again in August. She failed to appear for that hearing. Then on November 13th, she was arrested for failure to appear. Her bond this time was revoked. And a friend of her uh, sort of got into an altercation, and, uh, but that's what it was over, uh, 40 bucks. Her hearing was reset for December 6th. The autopsy states three weeks later, after being booked, the 34-year-old died of pneumonia one day before her court date. But something has got to be done uh, because folks are being neglected uh, at this county jail. The autopsy also reports Harris's lungs were riddled with infection. Autumn's father, Mike Harris, is a manager at Colin Burke Funeral Home. He says... This should have never happened. Her lungs was at the capacity of double, uh, full of infection, sepsis. That's why I know in the profession that I am that they let her die. Harris filed a medical malpractice lawsuit against preemptive forensic health solutions. That's the medical company that was contracted through the sheriff's office at the time of her death. That company has since been replaced by quality correctional health care. According to court documents, the jail knew Harris had pneumonia when she was booked. Those records also note she had medication for her illness when she arrived. From all that we can tell, no, she did not receive it. There's certainly no positive affirmative evidence as there absolutely should be in a medical setting that she was given the medication. Autumn Harris's case isn't the only one involving the Walker County Jail. Although the sheriff's office was under different leadership at the time of her death, the sheriff's office is currently facing a wrongful death lawsuit after the death of Anthony Mitchell. But my heart goes out to those folks because I definitely know what that mother is going through. And it's not a fun experience when something could have been prevented in both situations. Jones says Harris is just one of many cases involving the jail that have many people questioning what's going on inside those four walls. In, in Autumn's case, just a, just a modicum of dignity would have sent her to the hospital and she'd be alive. Now, I did reach out to PFHS. That's the company named in this lawsuit. I have not yet heard back at this time. A court date is set for May 15th. In the studio, Carly Lang, CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on. According to lawyers, the medical personnel named in the lawsuit tried to get an ambulance three times the morning Tony Mitchell died. But they say those requests went unanswered by jail personnel.
we can't physically call the ambulance. The county does that. And that's standard in all jails. LaBella McCallum is representing nurse practitioner Alicia Heron, nurse Brad Allred, and Quality Corrections Healthcare, the medical company contracted out by the Walker County Jail, which are all named in the wrongful death lawsuit filed by the family of Anthony Tony Mitchell. McCallum says her clients tried to get Mitchell help three times. Both of the latter two nurses were told an ambulance has been called and it's on its way. Last week, the family filed an amended lawsuit claiming he was denied access to medical and mental health treatment for the two weeks he was in jail. McCallum says typically detainees get a full medical assessment, but she says the county wouldn't allow it for safety reasons. He was not allowed to be brought to us for those assessments by the county because of security and his combativeness. We never were able to get him to medical to do a full assessment are allowed into his cell. The lawsuit also claims Mitchell was denied water for over 70 hours. According to McCallum, around four in the morning on January 26th, medical staff was called because they were having trouble getting him to respond. McCallum says this was the first time any medical staff was able to enter his cell and physically examine Mitchell. You know, she was able to go in with the county officials and, and get vitals and touch him and do more of a real assessment. And that's when she came to the conclusion that he was dehydrated. The amended suit also claims jail staff intentionally blew cold air into Mitchell's cell. I have never heard that that was called the freezer or that the county deliberately controlled the temperature. Medical records note he had a rectal temperature of 72 degrees when he arrived at the hospital. An official autopsy report is still pending. We don't know if the temperature that the emergency room doctor reported was an accurate temperature. I do know that a 72 body temperature is extremely low. McCallum says the investigation is still ongoing and she says her clients are fully cooperating. I reached out to the lawyers representing the sheriff's office. They said when they filed their response to the amended lawsuit in about a week or so, it quote should cover your questions. Reporting in the studio tonight, Carly Lang, CBS 42 News, local coverage you can count on.